Hello and welcome to another live stream. It's your boy, the late Lord Haven. This is kind of an impromptu live stream. Uh, I wasn't sure whether I was going to do one today, so I didn't schedule it in advance. I didn't do any community posts. I just thought, no, I do want to do it. So here we are. Let me adjust my chair and have some water. I drank that way too dramatically. Hello and welcome. So little bit of background in my fantastic according to me uh video every single house explained within the reach in ck3 your boy went through all of these bad boys all of these duchies all of the counties they're in all of the baronies they're in the entire history of the reach it's a 55 minute video from the from garden coast all the way to Bitterbridge, the north and south of the River Mander. But there's one duchy I forgot to talk about, and that is the Arbor. No, that's not true. I didn't forget to talk about them. I did research for everything. I recorded talking about them, and I don't really know what happened, but <laughs> if they weren't in the video, I remember uploading it and seeing all the comments saying, where's the Arbor? And I thought, what do you mean, where's the arbor? It's in the video. And I rewatched the video and it just wasn't there. So I have no idea what happened. I don't know whether maybe I didn't hit record and I didn't make a video clip. Maybe I did have that clip, but I never added it to uh, my DaVinci Resolve when I was making the video. <laughs> Something like that. Maybe I just, I don't know. I genuinely don't know where it went. The footage is just, it's gone. Maybe I did put it in DaVinci Resolve and when editing it I accidentally deleted an entire clip or copied something over it, I don't know. But, the time has come my friends. I've been busy working on a, the Blackfire video, so I wasn't able to do this, but I do want to get some live streams pumped out over the next few days, so, you know, maybe in a, this this will be me talking about the arbor and the houses, the houses inside the arbor and, you know, you can ask questions and so on. Uh, and I'm also probably going to let just let the the timeline play out and kind of turn this into a mini observer mode live stream just for fun, so we can see some background stuff popping off. So this will be a nice short live stream, a bit of fun. And I want to do oh, I want to do another iceberg one at some point in the future because I did the Bolton video and then I did the uh, the 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 sort of video commentary live stream after the Bolton video and then I did the Bolton Iceberg, and that, that, was, that was rushed, but it was a fun one, so I thought, yeah, I need to do that. So, my last one was Tyrell, I need to do a Tyrell Theory Iceberg. I want to do more live streams with Quinn the GM, we're working on some things. Uh, working out when we when we have free time to do that. He's a busy man, you know. Uh, what else? Oh, and I still want to do that <laughs> that awesome idea of the assigning real-life crimes to a Song of Ice and Fire characters. That'd be a fun one. But anyway... Before we get started on the Arbor, I do want to say that uh, I'm working hard, for those who don't know, on an animated video for this month about the Blackfire Rebellions. It is tied to a sponsorship, which means I need to sp send it to the sub sponsor before it comes out, and so I need to leave some space, and I'm a very last minute guy. I do everything at last minute because of my <laughs> ADHD, basically. So the Blackfire video won't be out next Friday. Next Friday will be another CK3 one, it will be a nice Riverlands one, which will give me more time to focus on the Blackfire one. Okay, uh, without further ado, I think we should jump into it. As usual, like the video, that helps it to spread, subscribe if you want, uh, if you haven't already, and send me super chats if you want to support the channel and, you know, ask me questions, or get me to read dumb stuff out loud. And all that stuff. So yeah, welcome, welcome. Let's make up for my mistake and go through the Arbor. The one and only. Right, so the Arbor is an island off the coast of uh, the Reach. It's one of the richest places in Westeros. Namely, and it's also the uh, the host of the famous Red Redwine Fleet. The second... What is it? The, is it the most powerful fleet in Westeros? The Redwine Fleet? Or is it the second most powerful? I can't remember. But it's a super powerful fleet. Um, and it's a wealthy island because they are renowned for making uh, wine. So throughout the books you you often hear uh, about Arbor Gold or Arbor Red. 
Um, and there's even an interesting theory about Arbor Gold, which is that every time Arbor Gold is mentioned, or every time a character is drinking Arbor Gold or mentions Arbor Gold, it means that they're lying. And the Quinn the Gym has a good video about that theory, so check that out. So that's quite fun. But yes, so the Arbor used to just be a sort of a... It used to be an island that was under ironborn control, under the um, the iron grip of House Hor or House Horror or whatever. Let me search them up. So yes, the the former ironborn kings. Can I even if they're and there we go. They run horror. Why is why is there a surviving horror? So yes, as you can see by the um, the coat of arms of House Horror, the old ironborn kings. You've got. Uh, a ship, a tree, a raven, a bunch of grapes. I'm not, I can't fully remember what each of them represent, but I do know that the cluster of grapes on gold is meant to represent uh, House Hor's dominion over the arbor. But inevitably they lost the, oh, excuse me, inevitably they lost the arbor to uh, the kingdom of the reach. The Garden of Kings who ruled the Reach. In particular, King Merin III incorporated the Arbor, and then they've remained vassals ever since. So, the Arbor, of course, is ruled by none other than House Redwine. People really wanted to know about the Arbor. They were offended that I, I didn't talk about this in my video. Some people were like, House Redwine is my favourite house. I was like, damn. I'm sorry. So, yeah, House Redwine... Uh, no doubt they are named after their profession. They must be nobles who created wine, and that's how they got so wealthy. Their sigil is a cluster of purple grapes uh, with um, green leaves and vines on a field of blue. And their words are never mentioned in uh, the books, but in the mod their words are fruit of the vine, which is pretty cool. So here they are dukes of the arbor, and they're ruled by... This man, none other than Paxter Redwine, who is married to Mina Tyrell. So just to clarify, Mina Tyrell is the sister of Mace Tyrell. So Paxter is Mace Tyrell's brother-in-law. And he's a pretty interesting bloke. But actually, yeah, before we jump into Paxter, let's look at uh, some interesting members of House Redwine, shall we? Let me, so House Redwine are d descended from this guy, Gilbert of the Vines, one of the many um, supposed children of the mythological Garth the Greenhand, who fathered a bunch of children who supposedly went on to found various houses in Westeros, whether it's House Rowan, House Fossaway, House Beesbury, House Tarly, and so on. So this guy... Supposedly, this, this Gilbert of the Vines gentleman uh, taught the people of the Arbor how to make wine, and that's why wine exists in Westeros, supposedly. Um, going back in time, whoop, all the way up, we need to look for a guy called, there he is, that's probably him, right? Manfred. Manfred Redwine was the master of ships. For Jaehaerys the First, King King Jay himself, King Jizzle, his eldest son was Lord Robert, and Robert served as the uh, captain of the Gold Cloaks. Uh, and he had an, uh, Manfred had another son, Ryan, who was Lord Commander of the Kingsguard. In fact, he is considered one of the greatest uh, knights of all time, up there with Aemon the Dragon Knight, Aemon Targaryen. You know, he's often referred to in the books. And not as not super frequently, but he's referred to as a great knight of old, and he even served as a hand of the king. He was the hand of the king of uh, Jaehaerys, uh, but he is known for he served for like just a year, and he's known for being a disastrous hand. He was a great lord commander, but a terrible hand of the king, supposedly. Uh, he is in the show. He's in Hot D. Uh, we see him in episode one. But yeah, that's it. He's episode one. He's the. Kingsguard member who stands in the small council and so on. He's next to Jaehaerys at the Great Council. And he's an old man. And then in episode 2 they announced that he passed away in his sleep. 
and the new Lord Commander is Harold Westerling, and that's you know this is the predecessor of Harold Harold Westerling. Um, what else do we have? Ba -ba -ba. Yeah, so those are the the most interesting historical red wines, I'd say, which means we should go down and look at the modern red wines. So first off, Lord Paxter himself, the Lord of the Arbor, and basically the uh, Admiral of the Red Wine Fleet. So during Robert's Rebellion, where this mod is taking place, there's the Siege of Storm's End, and Paxter Redwine helps Mace Tyrell and Mathis Rowan during the Siege of Storm's End. But while Mace and Mathis amass their troops outside of the castle, Paxter Redwine takes his fleet uh, to, of course, oh, blockade Shipbreaker Bay so that nothing can come in or out. And the only thing that did come in and out was Davos Seaworth, who, of course, uh, was a smuggler. He did some smuggling. It always amuses me how Davos in the show has a, a Geordie accent for no conceivable reason. <laughs> He's the only character with a Newcastle accent. Which is quite quite fun. Um, what else did Pax get up to? So, interestingly, he doesn't, unlike most of the Reach, so, you know, most of the Reach follow House Tyrell and they declare for Renly, then after Renly's death, most of the Reach then go and, and declare fealty to Joffrey Brathian, with the exception of the Florents, who go over to Stannis, which I explained in my video. But the Red Wines remain neutral. They do not join King Renly at all, or Stannis. And this is because Paxter Redwine has two sons, who we'll be talking about in a bit, um, Horace and Hobber, who were squiring in King's Landing, and so he realised they were hostages, and he thought, if I rise up with my fleet, then my sons are going to be killed. Uh, so he, he stayed neutral. And then, of course, when the Tyrells sided with Joffrey, he, he followed along. Um, so he's named as an advisor on the small council by Tywin. He's not given a specific role, he's just an advisor. Um, and, of course, he becomes a bit of a sycophant during Joffrey's wedding, all those annoying nobles sort of praising him and giving him gifts. So he gives Joffrey... Um, a sculpture of a ship which he plans to build uh, for the Red Wine Fleet, and it's a ship called King Joffrey's Valor. Um, after Tywin's death, Cersei kicks him out of the small council because she doesn't want a Reach Bannerman as an advisor, and she sends him off to besiege Dragonstone. To siege Dragonstone, which of course is held by. Um, Stannis Baratheon supporters, while Stannis and most of his men have gone up to the wall. While well, they've gone up to the wall, uh, Dragonstone is still being occupied by a Castellan and a small group and so on. And so the Red Wines are sent to take care of it, and Pax de Red Wine wants to properly cut it off and slowly starve it out. But then the problems with the Ironborn raiding the Reach becomes too serious, and Pax de then takes his fleet to the Reach, and then Loras Tyrell uh, commands the Dragonstone siege, which results in potentially him being nearly killed by boiling oil, or maybe that's a lie, we don't fully know. But yeah. So the last, last we see of Paxter, he and his fleet are sailing around, and they're going to face off against Euron Greyjoy, which probably won't go well for him. Some people theorise that the Red Wine fleet are going to act as a giant blood sacrifice for Buron to wake a kraken or do some crazy magic event, something at the the so-called um, Battle of Blood, which may take place in Old Town. So, as I said, he's married to a Tyrell. He has two sons, Horace and Hobber, because in Westeros, uh, twins all need to have annoyingly similar names, or at the very least have the same first letter in their names because why not um, They are their nicknames are Horror and Slobber because why not <laughs> and yeah they are squires in King's Landing during the War of the Five Kings they basically become hostages to stop his father uh, their father from rising up uh, after the Red Wines join forces with the Brathians and Lannisters Tywin considers marrying one of these teenagers to Cersei uh, he, they're one of the many options, you know. Well, you know, let's have a have her marry one of the red wine heirs. 
Um, they both they are both complete simp's for Marjorie Tyrell. We can't blame them, but they are. Uh, and based on this information, that they're constantly, you know, I think what is it? They both they both fantasize about joining the King's Guard just so that they can protect Marjorie and be closer to her, and not necessarily caring about <laughs> inheriting their father's position. And so, yeah, because they simp over Marjorie, they are part of Cersei's plot to falsely accuse a bunch of people of sleeping with Marjorie to have her taken out politically and maybe literally taken out and killed. Uh, they are, of course, I think her plan is to, from what I remember, accuse a bunch of people, have some of them let go free as free men to sort of uh, put sprinkle some realism into the mix. So it's like, oh, no, no, we... we we got a bunch of people, we arrested them, we interrogated them, and some of them are innocent, right? Because that's realistic, they're not all going to be guilty. And naturally, Horace and Hobbit are released by the Faith, so they're currently safe for now in King's Landing. And Paxter also has a daughter called Desmona, I think? Desmona Redwine? Desmonda Redwine? Something like that? Who is, uh, yeah, his daughter. Who Sam Tarly was originally going to marry. At least Randall Tarly wanted him to before saying, Now nah, I'm kicking this guy off to the wall. Yeah, what else do we have? We have Desmond Redwine, who we don't know his relation to the main branch, but in the mod they've made him Pax's brother, and he is married to Denise Hightower, one of Lord Leighton's many daughters. And then we have this... Oh, wait. We have uh, Bethany Redwine, who is married to Lord Mathis Rowan. Um, not to mention, of course, uh, Paxter's aunt Olena Redwine, who married Luthor Tyrell and is the mother of Mace, Mina and Janna. Which means that Pax is married to his cousin. I just realised. Yeah, that's great. Uh, and of course, Olena is the uh, grandmother of Willis, Garland, Loras and Marjorie. Olena is diligent, authoritative, ambitious, cynical, a matriarch and elusive shadow. Intelligent. I think... Yeah. Refusing marriage. Uh, look at that. 17 diplomacy. 23 intrigue. Boy. Okay. One of Pax's traits. Patient, gregarious, honest, content. Cool. So, that's the red wines. Now, let's look at the... Counties within the arbor, owned by the Red Wines. Okay, let me check the chat, though. I haven't checked the chat in a bit. As I said before, feel free to send in super chats if you want to support the channel or ask me questions or get me to read off dumb stuff. I appreciate it all. I see some grape emojis in the chat. Feel free to spam some grape emojis to show your support for House Red Wine. What have we got here? Fantasy of tappy keyboard. I have a very tappy keyboard. It's all part of the ASMR experience. Okay, cool. So, first up, um, as I said, the Red Wines rule the Duchy of the Arbor and also the County of Winegard, which is this section over here. And within the County of Winegard, the mods have uh, the Barony of Orchard Watch, the cities of Ryam's Port, potentially named after Ryam Redwine, the legendary knight, uh, the city of Stillhouse, and the city of Vine Docks, which must be the port city. Again, this, this isn't stuff mentioned in the books, this is a uh, fun mod stuff. Uh, uh, here we have, where should we look at next? Uh, Mermaid Rocks. Ah, so to the north of the arbor we have some... some little smaller island offshoots here, uh, called Mermaid Rocks. And within there, in, within there, we have the city of Bast's Cradle. That's interesting. And Mermaid's Rocks in this mod are ruled by uh, House Cups, who rule this county. Now, House Cups is a canon house. 
the sigil are three golden cups on uh, <laughs> uh, red and blue diagonal bars on a field of gold. I don't know what the official term is. Uh, and yeah, the words are a sort of a generic like mod generated, a game generated one. Harold shares a warrior's bravery. Yeah, that's just a sort of a random one. So House Cups, we only know one member of House Cups, I believe, and that is this guy, Sir John Cups. And we know of Sir John Cups because he goes on to marry a member of House Hightower. Uh, just double checking, yes, he marries Layla Hightower. So that is... Uh... Where's Layla? There we go. Layla Hightower goes on to marry Sir John Cups. We don't actually know where House Cups is located um, in Westeros, but the, considering the Hightowers are in the Reach and they're nearby the Arbor and you have, you know, the Arbor's whole shtick is wine, grapes, you know, House Cups, it makes sense to put them here in the Arbor. Okay, what else do we have? We, we have... Oh, I see. We have let me. We have the Lordship of Peachtree and Vinetown. So these are two. Oh wait, hold on. House Cups also rule over Starfish Harbor. Just to clarify, the uh, County of Starfish Harbor. Where is that then? Ah, so okay. So Star Starfish Harbor and Mermaid Rocks are all ruled by House Cups. Uh, the counties of Peachtree and Vinetown are ruled by House Goldwine. So in Vinetown. There's the city of Peachport. Oh, sorry, no. In Peachtree is the city of Peachport. In Vinetown is the city of Winehouse. The city of Vinetown itself. And then the province of Grape Keep. Just keeping in line with the, uh, the general wine grape vibe, I guess. So House Gold Goldwine are not canon. They are a non-canon house. I believe they existed in the CK3 mod before this, um, but they are clearly a yeah, a uh, a cadet branch. Yeah, there we go. They're, they're, they're a cadet branch, potentially a bastard branch of House Redwine. It's pretty cool. So in this we have um, yeah the, the the same the purple grapes and green vines of. House red wine, but instead of a field of, uh, what is it? Instead of a field of blue, it's three of them on a field of gold. House gold wine. Which is pretty fun. I like that. Uh, oh, sorry. Smashing the table. What else do we have? We have, oh, last but not least, we have the county of Stone Crab Cape. Now, and uh, yeah, the city of Stone Crab K and the province of Wine Blossom. And that's ruled by House Stone Crab. And here we have a, a crab. Uh, and their words are peace without malice, which I think is also a, a, a auto-generated one. So there is not a uh, there is not a cano uh, <laughs> let me get that out again. There's not a canonical house stone crab, but there is a mention of a stone crab bay, which is um, and here they have the city of St stone crab K. But there's a stone crab bay, which is a small island off the coast of the arbor, which. It's currently held by the Ironborn. The Ironborn have captured Stone Crab Bay, and so the mod, have, the mod has created a house that rules over that place called House Stone Crab, which is fairly fitting. I'll tell you what I didn't do. I didn't look at the words of House Goldwine, did I? Sweet to sip. Nice. So that is the arbor. That's the one thing I forgot to talk about in the Reach video. And seeing as we're still here, let's have some fun. Let's press play and let the Civil War, uh, let Robert's Rebellion play out as is while I see what you have to say in the chat about House Red Wine and the Arbor. Just to clarify, this is, yeah, the Robert's Rebellion start date, but I do have the, I believe I have the Canon Children mod installed to make it a bit more interesting. So what does everyone have to say? Let me check, let me check, let me check. What do people have to say? Someone was asking earlier about uh, Discord. 
I forgot who was asking this. Do I have a Discord? I don't have a public one, but I do have a Patreon one, just because public Discords are can be a bit of a bastard to manage, and I don't really have the time or energy to like be moderating a Fantasy Haven Discord server. But I do have a Patreon one, which is a lot more, you know, a lot more of a smaller, intimate discussion. You can chat with me. You can chat with my other patrons. Obviously, we have like a meme channel, House of Dragon channel, Song of Ice and Fire shit posting and so on we do what else we do sort of like games and voice chat stuff and i have a lot more planned that i haven't been able to do but if you're interested in joining the patreon discord go ahead it's only um two pounds a month it's the minimum minimum tier to get in so two quid a month maybe in the future i'll have a public page uh, a public discord but probably not oh Hello. The Iron Throne has already united under the best timeline. This has happened once before. Do you remember? So Robert won and you get an event basically saying that you get to choose who should sit the throne. And they're probably, for the AI there's like different percentages, right? So it's like Robert is probably like 80%. Um, but like that last playthrough we did, Quellen is the king. <laughs> Quellen was chosen because technically he took part in the war, he has some level of war score, and the AI, the AI has selected him, which is insane, but Grey, Greyjoy King. <laughs> that is brilliant. Okay. The red wine words. Did I not mention the red wine words? I may have mentioned it when I first started the stream, but new people have popped in, which is fair. So, um, Fruit of the vine. That's it. Their words are fruit of the vine. Which is not canon, it's a mod. Mod words. Ooh, what's this? What's this? What's this? I see an interesting discussion about feudalism happened earlier. Where was it? Is the reach the region with the most powerful non-paramount houses? Potentially, yeah. The reach is pretty OP. Yeah, Gurm says he wishes he'd made more distinction between the types and ranks for lords. Yeah, that's true. I do want to do a video in the future when the when the chan channel's in a better swing and we sort of we have more followers, more supporters, um, more views, so I can start experimenting with more niche subjects as opposed to just like big houses. I do want to do an, a video talking about the feudal system in Westeros and comparing it to like real life medieval European feudal systems. Uh, because obviously it's a lot more streamlined in A Song of Ice and Fire, which is smart because you don't want to make things too complicated for the reader. And there are also fun little uh, uh, exceptions that I do appreciate it's sprinkled in. For example, the fact that uh, House Frey have a larger army than House Tully. And House Malister has a fleet, whereas House Tully doesn't. And yet House Tully are the Lord Paramount, even though they don't have as much land as other other houses and they don't have as big as an army, as big a fleet, but they're still the ones in charge because they were placed in charge, so it kind of shows the feudal system's not necessarily top down, it can be a bit messy, it can be sort of, you can be the overlord of a bunch of people but still subject to someone else and you can be less powerful than your vassals and so on. Uh, but it went off on a tangent there, going on to, um, yeah, what was being spoken about before in the chat. Uh, yeah, Gurm did say that he wishes he had more variation in terms of the feudal ranks, and I always thought that myself. I remember reading the books and being like, I'm loving this, but why is everyone a lord? <laughs> like, everyone of every rank is just, just has the title lord, and I always thought for someone who clearly likes ranks and a bunch of characters and organisations and, you know, just look at the appendix of those books. That's a sort of, that, that's Gurm's fetish. He likes those kind of big complex appendices. I'm surprising someone with that kind of nerdy mindset didn't have a more interesting feudal ladder. You know, it's Lord Paramount, and under them are Lord Bannermen, and then under them are Lords, 
and then more lords and landed knights. It's kind of boring, so where are the dukes, where are the counts, where are the barons, you know? Um, yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, I am sorry for not preparing this live stream in advance. If I had, everyone would, would have come with their Arbor Gold and got drunk. Okay, um, yeah, let's see what's going on. So, Quellen is the king, and he is known as the Frail. He's an old man. In this timeline, he took... What did he do in the war? <laughs> oh, I saw Randall cut down your... No. No way. No, Randall Tarly killed you on Greyjoy. That's incredible. That's incredible. That is excellent lore right there. Oh. So, oh, Quellen's dead. Oh, F in the chat for Quellen. He's passed away. Okay. <laughs> so it looks like Quellen Greyjoy, his contribution to the war is that he joined Robert's side. He fought the Battle of the Starry Sept, in which Euron was cut down by Randall Tarly, and then he lost it to Mace Tyrell. Oh, no, 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 no. He took part in a battle, then he lost the battle. Then he joined Robert, and then apparently didn't do anything else, and then after Robert won, he became king. Okay, strange timeline. But anyway, he has died of old age. Rest in peace to our boy Quellon Greyjoy. And now Balon, Balon Greyjoy, is the new king on the Iron Throne. And the best part is he hasn't got an insane sorcerer brother because he was... He got killed by Randall Tarly, holy shit. What did Balon get up to in the war? Not much. He ripped off Master Gunthal. Master Gunthal's head. That was presumably during the war. Okay. How are Balon's son, uh, children doing? We have Roderick, Marin, Asher... Theon. Victarion? Who's he killed? Uthor of Sage Crown. He's married to Wyla. And Oregon, Aaron, and Robin are all safe because Euron is not there to murder them. Brilliant. That's, that's some beautiful stuff. Okay. There was a certain thing I wanted to check in the chat. I missed it. Where is it? It was earlier on. Ooh, what if the red wines are main producers of Arbor Red while the gold gold wines make Arbor Gold? Maybe. That's quite cool. Well, that's probably the um, the reasoning behind the name of that house. I would say that the non-canon houses in this mod are really creative. Some of them kind of have dumb names, but most of them are really creative and intelligent. We need a review of the Houses of the North. Don't worry, there will be a review of the Houses, so... For those who weren't here earlier, the plan is for next Friday, I'm going to do every Riverlands house explained, and I'm doing that to give myself a bit more time on the Blackfire video, because I need to get that done, not last minute, but I need to have a few days to send that off to my upcoming sponsor so they can review it and make sure it's all okay. So we'll have Riverlands video next Friday, and then two weeks after that, we'll have the Blackfire Rebellions, then after that one maybe some Halloween stuff, and then we'll have a look at maybe the Veil? Uh, probably the Veil and then the North last, because it's the big, the big daddy. All hail King Balan. What's all this about a roleplay server? Oh, a CK3 Game of Thrones... Oh, cool. Yeah, uh, someone called Hugo is in the chat. I guess I'll shout this out to them. Give them a little shout out. They said, hey, anyone here looking for CK3, a Game of Thrones multiplayer role player server? We've got 75 players and counting. Hopefully Haven would like to join. I feel you'd love it. That could be cool. Um, yeah, feel free to 
If you send that to me on Twitter or, or, or Discord or whatever, go ahead with that. I'll have a look at that. Okay, what else? <laughs> Winds of winter spoiler. Yeah, Randall will Randall Tarley will slay your run. Oh, we've got some super chats. Sorry about that. We'll look at the super chats and then we will see how everyone fared in the War of the Five Kings. See if everyone survived. For example, Ned. Okay, first off, thank you for the super chat from Jai Hayes, who says, Would you rather fight at the fists of the first men <laughs> or be married to Celise Estamont? Do you I think you mean Celise Florent? Not Celise Estamon, I assume. Celise Florent being the niece of Lord Florent, who marries Stannis, and she's quite a uh, quite a cold, mean-spirited woman who is not described in the book as being particularly attractive, and is almost seen as one of the many burdens Stannis must bear within the narrative. Um, I assume you mean her. So would I mar mar ooh, would I rather marry Lady Mustache or fight at the fist of the first men? I mean, I have a chance of survival if I fight at the fist of the first men. Most of them died, but some of them got out, and Sam got out. And if Sam got out, I feel like I could get out. You know, I feel like I've got the speed, the dexterity. You know, I'll be gathered around with the boys, huddled around campfires, making our way to Craster's Keep. I feel like there could be some camaraderie in that. You know. Whereas if I marry Celise Florent, I don't think I'm surviving at all. You know, it's, it's not working. Although if I do marry her, she's okay with me hooking up with Melisandre, so... Mm. I didn't consider that. No, I'll take, I'll take my chances at the Fist of the First Men. Thank you for the super chat from Key, the one and only. Long live King Balon. You one of them queers, Theon Greyjoy. <laughs> That is funny when Theon um, returns to the Iron Islands and Balon's like, you're dressed like a whore. Why is my son dressed like a whore? Because of course he's dressed up as a noble with lovely silks and clothes and capes that he bought while up north. But the Ironborn dress a lot more simply. What are you, gay now? I also like in the show that Theon has a northern accent. And the other Ironborn, such as Balon and Asher and so on, are, have uh, southern English accents. And so it shows that Theon really is disconnected from them. That he has a completely different accent to them. That was a nice touch from Alfie Allen to go for Northern. And then Euron has whatever accent Pilo Ashbeck was trying to do. I'm not, I guess a Scandinavian person trying to do English accent is what his accent was. But thank you for the super chat. What else, what else? House Haven of Havenfall. I would love for the mod to introduce a House Haven. There's a, um, on Instagram, there's Robocart, or Robocart, who I mentioned in my previous video, who did some fun sigils and coat of arms for um, some YouTubers. So, Altship Dex, Glidus, Quinn the GM, and of course, myself, Fantasy Haven. And I think it would be really cool if the mod inserted his sigils into, like, some minor baronies or something as a, as a nod. That could be cute. Yeah, Boombler said, I always found it weird how A Song of Ice and Fire has no titles. Where's my Count Wyman Mandley? Where is Duke Mace Tyrell? Yeah, I do like how the mod handles it, where they treat the Iron Throne as an Empire tier realm, and then they, the Lord Paramounts are essentially kings, and then under them are um, the Bannermen are Dukes, and then under the Bannermen are Counts, and then under, the ba under them... The Petty Lords and the Landed Knights are represented as Barons. But yeah, you could also have it as... Because you could argue that it should be the Emperor on the Iron Throne, because these are all basically just... They are still kingdoms to an extent. Or you can have them as King... Uh, as Sorry, as Lords... Uh, blah, blah, blah. As Dukes. That's it. So you can have Duke Mace Tyrell, Duke Eddard Stark, Duke Hostetully, and all the Bannermen are Counts. Count Mandalay, Count Bolton. Ooh! Count Bolton, Count Tarly, and then under them you have, uh, you know, lords, barons, knights, so on. Yeah. 
it was like a failing of understanding how feudalism works, most assume that feudal equals absolutism, which really, really isn't true. Yeah, no, there's a... Feudalism is quite complicated and messy. I do think the for a fantasy book that's already quite complicated, I think George does a good idea, does a good job portraying it. Even if it is extremely streamlined and simplified, I'm okay with the way he does it. I just wouldn't wish the titles were a bit more exciting and varied, but I think that's more of a aesthetic choice, if any, than anything, you know. Um, yeah, it's like a good way to describe medieval armies are retinues of retinues, which I think he does a good job of portraying that they're not big, bulky armies r ruled by one person. It's several armies joining one army. Give that man a throne. Okay, yes, let's... Um... Okay, let's start exploring the houses. Again, too distracted. I've, I haven't... I'm very far behind in the chat because I haven't... I've got one monitor. Don't know if I mentioned that before, but I've got one monitor. Um, oh, shit. A war is going down. Oh, ho, ho. we'll check that in a second. But it means I've got to check my phone for... Okay. What's going on here? Lord Paramount Robert the Bloody of the Stormlands in the war for... Lord... P <gasps> Bobby B. Bobby B wants the throne. That's insane. And he's he's got Tywin and Ned on his side. And John, which makes sense. Balon currently has... These motherfuckers. Okay. It's not going well for Balon. So I like the idea that Robert... My headcanon is that Robert won the throne and then there was a great council to decide the next ruler. And everyone just randomly went with Quell and Greyjoy for no conceivable reason. Robert's like pissed off so he spent the ne next several years like planning his revenge. Okay. Oh, like, Robert, you could have taken the throne for yourself, man. Like, you're the one who sat on it in our timeline. What did you do? How did... How did Quellen end up on the throne? You are to blame for this. Okay, so Duran is doing okay with his kids. And he looks like he's pretty neutral. Oh, Mace Tyrell is dead. Rest in peace, everyone. He died in his sleep. Hmm. And now we have... Willis the Cruel, oh dear, for his great acts of cruelty and malice. How? What's he done? He manhunted Ormond. This isn't the first time we've had Willis Tyrell in an Observer stream, like, do some manhunting, which is basically what Ramsay does. He literally just, hunt, just capturing people, releasing them and hunting them down. Willis, why are you doing that? Don't just grow a moustache in response. I know you look sexy now, but, like, don't, not acceptable, man. Okay. And, of course, because I have the Canon Children mod on, we have Lady Marjorie, which is cool. So, Garlan is married to Melora Rowan. Loras is married to a red wine. And Marjorie has been born, married to Robin Norcross. And he's currently... Okay, he's done some truce, truces. He's not on anyone's side. Oh! Excuse me? Oh shit, we got a Florent in charge. Unexpected. Alistair Florent has taken over, I assume. Installed by faction demand. Okay, so the the cruel Willis Tyrell in this timeline where maybe he was not wounded by Oberyn and he wasn't humbled and he hunted men in the woods like Ramsay. He was kicked out by a faction that said, nope, we don't want you. We liked Mace. We don't like you. And we should put the Florence in charge anyway because they have greater claim. Through the paternal line, uh, the patrilineal line, they do in fact have a greater claim to the Reach. And you can imagine, um, th that's why I'm excited for like a, you know, War of the Five Kings bookmark. Playing a Stannis, you could probably put the Florence in charge of the Reach. That's probably his plan. It'll be put House Florent in charge of the Reach. 
Uh, Alistair, Alistair. Better timeline for Alistair. In the last timeline, he gets burnt to death. Uh, in the, uh, the the book timeline, he's burnt to death by Melisandre. In this one, he's Lord Paramount. Okay. The Tyrells have been cast aside. Uh, Robert has risen up. Robert the Bloody. He's undeterred by a little mess, no matter how many people it used to be. Ooh. What's he been up to then? So it looks like he did a bunch of warfare during Robert's rebellion. He slew Rhaegar. Um, he imprisoned a bunch of people. He became rivals with Jamie. Oh, he did marry Cersei. Oh, shit, he's married to Cersei. Oh, that might be... That might be thanks to the Canon Children mod. Potentially. Well, that's pretty... Oh, she's... She's all... She's strapped. She's in the fight herself. Holy shit. Okay, so that's why Tywin is on his side. Because he... If he became rivals with her, does that mean... The whole incest thing is like... Yeah, incestuous adulterer. Okay. So it's an exposed truth. That Cersei and James slept together, but for some reason both of them are still alive. Okay. Sure. So he slew Rhaegar. Ooh. John Connington. Rest in peace. Bobby B killed John Connington. There's something funny about his nickname being The Lion. Not the Griffin. And then Lord Grand View also executed. That's why he's called the Bloody, I guess. And he's married to Cersei, and what children do they have? Joffrey, thank you for the ca the canon children mod, is coming in clutch. We got Joffrey, uh, Marcella, and Tommen, and of course, some extra. Sanel Sand? Wait, what? Wait, I'm getting confused here. Hold on. Hold on, let's work this out. Let's work this out. So Robert has... Yes. Joffrey, Myasella, and Tommen, as usual. Maya Stone, obviously. And Edric Storm, who's the son of Delena Florent. Um, but then it looks like Cersei has an extra child. Tommen, Myasella, Tommen, Sanel Sand, who is inbred. Why is she a sand, though? She's born a bastard and raised in Dawn. Has she been sent away to Dawn? What the hell? Okay, yeah, so it looks like this is the child where the incest was exposed. And for some reason, her and Jamie got away with it, but now the, their bastard is in Dawn? Sent off to Dawn, I guess? That's kind of interesting. Okay, let me continue the war. So, he's married to Cersei, the incestuous knight lady. Stannis, how's Stannis doing? Stannis is married to Kyra Frey. Um, cool. And Renly is married to Aileen Connington. Nice. Oh, Balon's not doing good. That's because Rob Robert's got all the big boys on his side. Um, the Westerlands, of course, Tywin is with Robert because his daughter's married to her. What have you been up to? Okay, um, let's check out the Lannisters. Lady Paramount. What's she the Lady Paramount of? Of the Stormlands. Wait, what? Oh, yeah, no, because she's married to Robert and he's Lord Paramount of the Stormlands. He's not the king. I got a bit confused there. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? Um, Jamie, of course. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. Sunel Sand. <laughs> Jamie is still in the King's Guard. Uh, oh, there's a new there's a new son, Josua. Jo Lord Josua Baratheon, son of Robert Weezing. Um, yeah. Um, something tells me Josua is not the son of Robert, and is still the son of. <laughs> I like Jamie and Cersei are still having incest babies, even though they've been exposed. Tyrion, how are you Tyrion? Tyrion's married to Melissa Crakel. Um, that's one hell of a parting, holy shit. Okay. That's an uncomfortable cut. Lancel Lannister, the the one and only. 
He's doing well. What are his traits? Brave. Sadistic? I, don't think, I wouldn't say he's sadistic. Just, not really. Lustful, yes, because he sleeps with Cersei. Let's not forget this. Cersei sleeps with 16-year-old Lancel Lannister in a Game of Thrones because he kind of looks like Jaime. People don't talk about that enough. That's fucked up, Cersei. Oh, she's she's looking ill. Oh, no. Um, Kevin, Jenna, Tyget, Jerrion. Yeah, the Lannisters are doing fine. Uh, the Greyjoys, less so. Let's let's check out how the Greyjoys have been doing, shall we? Um, so obviously, Quellen died of old age. You're unslain by Randall Tarly, which is pretty based. Uh, Balon, what have you been up to? Oh yeah, you hit, ripped that guy's head off at some point. Oh, he's losing wars. Oh, it's not going to last long. His head is going to end up on a spike, my boy. Um. Hmm. Betrayed to a Harlow. That's the youngest man with silver hair I've ever seen. Aragorn's captured. Captured by Lord Baylor. Baylor of Rollingford. Okay. It's not going well for the Iron Throne. Let's check out the Rivlands now. Hoster's still going strong. Um Edmure is married to Melantha Blackwood, has a couple of kids. One named after his mother. Okay. Catelyn's going strong in the north. And Lysa is still married to John Arryn. Oh, okay. Before we jump into the Vale, the Iron Throne has once more united the realm. Under Bobby B, the Bl King Robert the Bloody. King Bobby B. Bobby B's belly and led to Bobby the Bloody taking over. Oh, he's looking good. He's looking sharp in the blue. That suits him nicely. There we go. Lord Paramount Robert Brathian has desperately reverted the timeline one year before the events of the book so things can continue how they should in the books. Well, in theory, everything could continue the same way. Bobby Beam has managed to be king. Um, Cersei has a bunch of bastard children. Uh, no, it can't carry on as in the books because that's not a secret. It's not like John Aaron or Ned can discover this or whatever, because like, everyone knows apparently. It's like an open fact that she's a adulterous, incestuous woman, and nothing's been done about it. But either way, all hail King Bobby B. He always finds his way to the top. He always finds his way to the top. In fact, what does change? I'm trying to think what what changes because we still have Duran. We have King Bobby B and Queen Cersei. Oh, I guess the Tyrells aren't in power. So in this timeline... Oh, that's what's different. In this timeline, let's say Bobby B dies. Stannis tries to take the throne because he says the children... We know Cersei's incestuous. The children are, you know, incest babies. Ned Stark is not executed because he doesn't discover anything and tell Cersei about it because everyone already knows. Stannis wants to be king, jo the Lannisters say no, it's Joffrey, he's legitimate. The Reach does not side with Renly, but they side with Stannis because their niece is married to Stannis. So Stannis, from the get-go, gets some of the Crown Lands, all of the Reach. Maybe Renly has the Stormlands. The Reach probably beats the Stormlands in that battle. And then Stannis takes the Iron Throne. So in this timeline, we could just because of the Florence ruling the Reach, we could see Stannis successfully taking especially if Stannis then assassinates Renly like he does in the books that means Stannis will get all of the Reach and the Stormlands will probably follow suit and join him and then Reach and Stormlands and uh, some of the Crownlands etc boom he takes King's Landing however one thing I didn't take into account is that uh, the Westerlands army isn't going to be tied up in the Riverlands because there isn't going to be a war for independence. As you know, there might be. If Ned is the hand, he knows the children are probably illegitimate. He's going to be like, look, it should be Stannis. They're clearly bastards. And Cersei will probably admit it, and then Joffrey will have him killed anyway. And yeah, so this is the Stannis, King Stannis timeline. I'm telling you now, it's a King Stannis timeline. Okay. So what What now is Balon? Balon has just been stripped and, and made... Lord Paramount. That's boring. 
You can't overthrow the king and then like be like, you are now the lord of your islands again. You have to kill him. At least imprison him, like this guy. Okay, John Aaron is still wheezing away. Busting, <laughs> busting dust into Lysa Aaron, producing no kids. I know he's got a couple. <gasps> that's the noise. <laughs> okay, Robert, hey, Robert Aaron, that's nice. Thank you, Canon Children mod. He's delicate and he's stuttering. Oh, that's a shame. He is charming, though, apparently. He also looks suspiciously like Littlefinger. Hmm. And Lucas. Little Lord Lucas, interesting. And we've made it. We've made it to the year of the books. That's fun. Can we find Little Fungus? Where's Little fun Fungus? Where is he? Where's Middle Fimbers? I'm going crazy. Where's how, where's where's Baelish? Huh? Where's Peter Baelish? Where you gone, bro? Is he dead? Is Peter Baelish dead? It's telling me the House Baelish doesn't exist, look. It's not giving me any Baelish. The man is dead. I can't find him anywhere, he should be in this county. Yeah, Lordship of Midlaw, or is it Midlaw Point? <gasps> He's dead. House of Baelish is... He was executed. Holy shit. Littlefinger was executed by um, Lord Alan the Shy of Grimholm, who's his liege lord. His liege lord executed him. This is the best timeline. What did he do? I don't know. Well, Littlefinger's beheaded. So little, both Littlefinger and Euron are dead. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Cersei, stop, 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 stop. What are you doing? There's no war. You're just, you're just posturing at this point. It's hot, don't get me wrong, but it's unnecessary. More kids? Okay, that one probably is Stannis's. Uh, sorry, <laughs> not Stannis's. Robert, let's be honest. Where were we? Uh, we got to the Vale, so let's check out the North. Nedard is the honest. Let's see what Kiddly Wings he has. Ooh, Benjamin didn't draw in a nice watch. He's got Rob. Oh yeah, of course, the Canon Kids. We got Rob, who's betrothed to a tall heart. Sansa, um, who is Sansa. Luckily, Littlefinger is dead, so she's safe. Aya is chilling. Bran, Rickon. And John Seller. Okay. I always want to see how the Boltons are doing. No! Roos is dead. Was killed in an attack. Okay, so hold on. You're on Greyjoy. You're on Greyjoy. Roos Bolton and Littlefinger are all de have all been killed in some way. They have all been murdered. Someone's gone back in time and they're trying to save the future of Westeros. Incredible. Ramsay's still alive, but he is just patient and honest, so it's all good. And Demeric is married to Alice Castor. Interesting. There we have it. I don't... Ooh. One house I haven't checked up. I haven't checked out, rather. Looked up. The Targaryens. How are the Targaryens doing? Ares died of heart failure. Oh, I, okay. I guess he died of heart failure during the war. Oh, it was too much for him. Um, Rhaegar, of course, slain on the trident. Rhaenys and Aegon disappeared without a trace. Same as Viserys. Hmm. 
But no Daenerys, because Ares died too early, it looks like. Will we see a Targaryen invasion? Perhaps. Perhaps, perhaps. What do the people have to say? What, 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 what are you guys talking about then? Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's the female Jon Snow, you're right. <laughs> Cersei and... Oh. Lord Tywin's prisoner. What the fuck? What? Tywin, why? <laughs> oh, that's your son. No mercy. But yeah, his... <laughs> his his uh, daughter with Cersei is the female Jon Snow. It's always funny when you look at Robert's so-called kids and they all have, like, congenital traits. They've all got, like, illnesses and hunchbacks and, like, weak constitution and stuff. It's like, hmm, are you sure? And they all happen to be blonde, of course. It's like, you sure that's yours? You can't send me DMs on Twitter, really? Is that right, Hugo? That's a shame. You should be able to, I'm just... Twitter.com forward slash fantasyhavenyt. That should be me. I don't, I don't block messages or anything. You want Aegon and Fagon to invade at the same time. Oh, fun fact. Someone called Ben said, fun fact about the Arbor with all the stuff that came out of the Cushing Library. The the leaks from a few years ago. Apparently the Arbor was originally called Roin. Interesting. Yeah, I think I remember reading about that and then Roin became the River Roin and so on. That's interesting. You're blocked from receiving d- I'm blocked from receiving DMs, am I? I shouldn't be. That's odd. Let me just double check that, because I've got messages from other people. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay, that should that should be fine now. There we go. Yeah, try now. Wait, does that mean no one's been able to message me before? Oh, that's a bastard, isn't it? Yeah, I think I've only ever messaged other people on Twitter. And then they've responded to me. Oh, so all this time, the people who may have been... Trying to reach out to me, they haven't been able to. Oh, that sucks. Anyway, I'm sure no one here cares about my fucking Twitter. Um, okay, well, I think we can either wrap up now or we can wait out a few years and see if there's a Targaryen restoration war. There probably will be, so let's wait it out a bit. For now, I think I'll chat about the future of the channel. Riverlands video next Friday... Blackfire video after that with a cheeky sponsorship. No, it's not Ottable, unfortunately. It's not. It's a real sponsorship. It's not a meme one. <laughs> Finally, um, what should I do for Halloween? Any ideas? I'm thinking about Halloween. I don't want to do a Halloween video. I don't know if I have time to make a full-fledged Halloween video, and I can't think of anything that would be sort of fun enough. I could do a live stream. Work with some creepy song, Vice and Fire stuff. (laughs) 
<laughs> Elon Musk is trying to sabotage my account. <laughs> you won't win, Elon. Fantasy Haven will become bigger than Mr. Beast. I will become the biggest channel and the biggest account. When will you do the trial stream? Uh, that's a reference to the putting a Song of Ice and Fire characters on trial and assigning real life crimes to them. I don't know, I wanted to do that this month, but I've been very busy with the art. I've noted the art is what takes the most time in making my videos. The script and the audio and editing the audio and animating the video and all that stuff does take effort and a lot of time, but the art takes the most time. I'm such a slow drawer and I don't consider myself an artist. Like, and when I'm doing like a Blackfire video where there are dozens of characters to draw. Oh, excuse me, sorry. Excuse me. Uh, it takes a long time. So, I've been busy with that, but because I've delayed it now, that gives me a bit more free time, and I, I want to pump out some more live streams so that you've got more content. Um, oh, whoops, sorry about that noise. I don't know. Keep an eye out. I'll let you know. It won't be an impromptu one like this one, where like I'm suddenly doing it, like, boo. Is I'm going to prepare that in advance, because I want to properly do like a fun... A fun one where get a bunch of viewers in. I talk about, I sign it. You guys vote on whether they're guilty or not guilty. If it's a funny video, I might even edit it and like post it on the channel as a proper video. I don't know. Clegane's, yep, I do want to do a a Clegane animated video at some point. That'd be fun. Every every fray explained. I've never heard of that. What what's that one? A pink letter video. That could be cool. See, theory video, because the thing is, every single theory has been talked about to death already, so I don't know what I would add apart from presenting the theories in an animated format, which in itself is still interesting and fun, but I don't know if it's like... I feel like my content works better with explaining lore compared to theories. Although that being said, the, the phrase of a war animated video, the section I did on Quinn's video about the Red Wedding, that was really good. That was, like, quite fun. <laughs> Ironically, I think that's one of the best things I've done, and it's not even on my channel. Uh, yeah, I should dive into theories more. But not the obvious ones, because they're not the ones that have been talked about, like, all the time. <laughs> what happened to Araya? Yeah, maybe. Magor? No, 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 I want to save Magor. I want to do videos encompassing each uh, the reign of each of the Targaryen kings in order, starting with Aegon. Um, so that'll be another period of history. Uh, Ramsay Bolton. <laughs> I've already done a Ramsay Bolton video. Oh, you mean <laughs> you mean Ramsey Bolton crimes, crimes against humanity? Yeah, we need to make that live stream fun and funny, and not just. I don't want it to like start off fun and then gradually we're just like talking about the really dark shit everyone does and be like, okay, so fifteen counts of murder, three counts of rape, twenty counts of kidnapping, and it's just like, oh shit, life in prison. I should draw in some cameos of my fellow A Song of Ice and Fires. Uh, yeah, that's fine. That, that's a cool idea. I mean, I when, I... when I've collabed with Quinn and Random Internet Guy and the Interesting Nerd Club, I have indeed uh, had drawn characters of them appearing on screen. I do also have a Preston cameo in a plane going overhead, sorry. Someone make a super cut off every time I get interrupted by a plane and I'm like, sorry about the plane. Um, I have some Preston cameos. I have a drawing of Preston as a maester holding a book that says uh, Storm's End, was it? Storm's End uh, Nuclear Research or something like that. Uh, and I sometimes have him in the background when I'm showing maesters. But yeah, I would love to do more collaboration with other Song of Ice and Fire YouTubers, but 
maybe I'm a little bit too small. And I will say now, no spoilers or anything, but Quinn the GM, my good friend, will be planning some interesting videos in the future concerning other YouTubers. I'll leave it at that. Uh, Aria Targaryen. I, there's not enough to say though. Like it would just be she flew off and came back and is like that. I don't know. It's not enough for a bit because so much of *A Song of Ice and Fire* has already been like discussed and dissected to the point where there's not much left. And I want to present old concepts in a new way, in a in a streamlined way, and in a fun way. But I I can't. I don't want to do that for every single. I think there needs to be enough meat on the bone to have a proper animated video about it. Maybe I'm th overthinking it. Maybe I'm... Because obviously I want to get over the 8 minute mark. Because I feel like between 8 and 12 minutes is like an, a generally good time frame. Both to like monetize my video and you know actually live off of being a YouTuber. Which is pretty difficult. But also having a video that's a decent enough length. That's just like... That people want to watch. You know? A five minute video won't make me much money and it's not much watch time which means YouTube doesn't push it as much which sucks. And also I don't know if it's like enough, you know, if I, if I was like, hey, more consistent videos but they're shorter, I feel like there's, I don't know, I'd rather do longer videos where I talk about stuff in depth, like oversimplified, talking about history, than do the smaller scale stuff for a couple minutes. It feels like it feels a bit pointless. It's like you could find that. I don't know. I don't know. But yes, <laughs> I can have um, YouTubers pass in the background to see if anyone notices. I do have cameos in my videos also of my highest patron tier. The highest ever patron tier I have is called the Lord of Light. And if you sign up for that tier, there's someone in the... My good boy Boomblur is currently a Lord of Light. Because um, he desperately wants to be in the Blackfire video. Um... Basically, I, I draw a, I'll draw an art piece for you, like in my style, I'll make a character of you or, or, or of whatever you want me to draw, and then that character will cameo in the background or foreground of a video. So I've had a few Lords of Lights in the past, usually it's a temporary thing, and I throw in <laughs> them doing whatever, they usually tell me what they want, lots of, lots of time it's them being killed, because that's, that's quite fun. One time I had two patrons, like, fighting with swords, I forgot what video that was, but... For most people, it's always fun imagining because when when I draw art for my patrons, they like they like to come up with their own sigils, usually usually on CK three, and so it's always fun drawing the sigil onto the body, and then realizing uh, the viewers are going to watch and be like, "What's that house?" and they go research and be like, "This house doesn't exist." Am I team green? I'm not either team because it's not real. Uh... <laughs> that was very obnoxious. Sorry. Um, I'm not either team, no. I don't. Know, I don't want to pick a team. Is you know. The narrative presents the blacks as the protag as the flawed protagonists, basically. Um. But I think the the story is interesting and it's fun to see the factions go against each other. But I'm not like. Like, close with a certain side or something. Was that a boring answer? That feels like a boring answer. Hmm. Yeah, Callum said they're kind of burned out on the Song of Ice and Fire lore. All the best stuff doesn't have enough lore. Fan made stuff is the coolest. Yeah, that's that's the whole thing. I do feel like we've sort of reached the point where all the lore and all the theories have already been explained and are all available. I just want to present it in a fun way, in a unique way, and no one else is doing animated fantasy videos in the style of all those successful historical animated videos. So it's like, sure, I'll, I'll fill in that niche. And obviously, I keep promising to, but eventually I will... <laughs> Fulfill that promise and start doing more than the Song of Ice and Fire. Start doing other fancy stuff.
Um, uh, Harrison Ford answer. <laughs> well, me saying that I don't care about each side. That was a Harrison Ford answer. I sound like a grumpy old man being like, who gives a shit? It's not real. <laughs> no, it's it's fun to pick a side. Team green, team black. That stuff is fun. If you're not taking it seriously and you're having fun with it and like you're role playing, that's I'm, I like that. I'm okay with that. It's just I get put off by people who take it seriously and get angry and it's like, it's not real. What are you talking about? Um, team pale hair, someone said. Team shepherd. But who do I consider the rightful heir of Viserys? Um... But that's that's the point. <laughs> there are arguments for both. Viserys named his daughter as heir, but tradition and precedent says that Aegon should be the heir because he's the firstborn. And is it based on what Viserys says, or is it based on what the majority of nobles want? Like, it doesn't matter, ultimately. It's all bloodline bullshit. And I am disappointed, of course, by how some of the nuance in the factions, is, especially Team Green, is... Stripped away by the show. I love Hot D, but very baffled by some of the choices they did with Team Green. Some of them I loved, some of them I was confused by. <laughs> do, I, do you think Tywin Lannister would be a neoliberal in real life? <laughs> oh no, should I do a live stream where I'm like... Oh no, that would be... Oh, that, imagine I did a live stream where it was like... A song of Ice and Fire characters in real life, in modern day, where would they be on the political compass? Oh, that would be so cringy. People would be so mad, because I'd... Oh. That would be quite funny. The political compass stuff is always... It's just the most, like, pop culture thing ever. It's, it's like, oh, this character is... I oh, don't know, authoritarian and strict, so he's going in the top right. This character is part of a, I don't know, an alien species that's a hive mind, so that's top left. This guy likes weed, that's bottom left. This guy likes money, that's bottom right, is it's, it's always. That being said, though, Tywin neoliberal? Sure, why not? Tywin's a CEO, man. He's the CEO of Castly Rock Industries. You know what, even though I said it was cringe and annoying, I'm now really liking the idea of, like, assigning a Song of Ice and Fire characters to the political compass, but it would have to be, like, a giant shit post because people would get pissed off at everything I did. Because the political compass in itself is kind of dumb and oversimplified, so I'd have to treat it as a giant joke. <laughs> yeah, my position on the Dance of Dragons. I just want to grill for God's sake. If I were a noble, I would be like uh, the ultimate fence sitter. I'd be the ultimate centrist. I'd be like, actually, both sides are bad, and while everyone's like burning around me, from dra <laughs> Aemon is like burning the Riverlands. The Daemon is fighting his way through the Riverlands. Corpses everywhere, fire everywhere. I'm like, both sides are bad, actually. Actually, I'm not gonna. Actually, I'm not gonna side with anyone. Um, the realm is burning, and I'm like, they both have good points. To be fair, literally any of the blah blah blah. Yeah, the show ignores Team Green stuff. That's what I wanted. The I, I don't know. I've rambled about this enough, but that's what I wanted. The Team Green episode to be, the Green Council episode, it should have been the Greens making up, like, presenting their side of the argument to the audience, basically saying, here's a rundown. This is why you should side with us. And then the the next episode being, no, this is why you should side with the Blacks. But instead it's just, like, a couple lines muttered off screen. Oh, but all the lords who swore the oath are dead, and oh, but he's a b b bastard children, and it's like, there's no debate or discussion. Oh! Oh, finally. Finally. Young Griff with the drip. Young Griff with the beard. Who's he got on his side? What the fuck, Sam? 
Sam Tully? Oh, Sam Tully is ripped. <laughs> oh my god, Chad Sam. <laughs> You know, you know how I said this is like the best timeline because we have, we have a dead, dead Euron, dead Littlefinger, dead Roos. Well, now we have dead Randall, who's also killed, died in a jousting accident. We have dead Randall, and then instead of kicking his son to the Night's Watch, his son becomes like a buff Chad who's no longer living in the, no longer living under the boot of his father, but because of his. Abuse, he's now like sadistic and vengeful. <laughs> he's a vindictive villain. Now that is incredible. Okay, yeah. Let's see the two sides then. So, no, oh, I'll stop doing that thing. Okay, where have we got? So, buff. Buff Sam is siding with Young Griff, as is House Ironwood. Ironwood supported the Blackfires. Interesting. House Peak, also Blackfire supporters. That's intriguing. Hey, House Keltigar. Mmm, the Crab Boys. Crabs in the chat one. House Osgrey, also, uh... Hmm. Also Blackfire supporters. How interesting. House Valarian, naturally. They want Valerians on the throne. House Dari, Targaryen supporters, classically. House Bracken, because they're opposed to whatever the Black, uh, the Blackwoods are opposed to. And who is on Team Baratheon? Nope, show me. Show me, don't mess with me. Stop. Oh, never mind. No, I'm not going to give up. Show me. Show me the allies. Don't do the... Ah, oh, never mind. Yeah. Let the war commence. Okay. Tywin, <laughs> Tywin Lannister removed as Speaker of the House. If I ever did a political compass stream, it would just be one of those annoying, like, this character I don't like is going to go in a quadrant that I don't like. That's my politics. That people do. Hey, does it, does anyone else think that this real life political figure is just like this Game of Thrones villain? Yeah, Savage Sam. Pour one out for Savage Sam. He's not dead. I don't know why I said pour one out. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sam ain't nothing but protein. Crab boys. Okay. Let the war commence. Who's in charge of Dawn right now? Duran is still... Oh, Quentin died. The frogman. Suspicious circumstances. Ariana, it wasn't you, was it? Good. Ariane's husband looks like the most beta man ever. That pisses me off. Okay, Duran. Ooh, he's not looking good, but he's still alive. Uh, the Reach. Lady Paramount Belliona. That's interesting. So obviously the Tyros kicked out of power. Lord Paramount Alistair drank himself to death. His eldest son, Alakine, died from his wounds. During the war. Ah, so he died he's died during the war. Now we have Lady Paramount Belliona. Who's mar who's married to Boar's Hood. Boar's Hood, everyone. The Lord of Paramount of the Reach, Boar's Hood. Nice. Okay. Um. How 
How how's Tyro doing? I wanna I wanna know. Let me know. Um Oh They're everyone's being murdered in this <laughs> in this in this timeline. No one's having normal deaths. Willis Tyrell died in a fight. Damn. That's kind of depressing. He was a cruel tyrant. He got thrown out of power. Died in a scuffle. Garland. Loras. They got no kids, bro. Marjorie. Who did Marge marry? Marjorie married Robin Norcross and not me, which is a shame. Haston and Honor Tyrell. Interesting. Stormlands are... Ruled by Lord Paramount Morrigan. What the fuck? How did House Morrigan take over? That's cool though. Ronat the Lord. His nickname is the Lord of Crow's Nest. I mean, he is the Lord of Crow's Nest. That's not a nickname. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why is that? Okay. Oh, when Bobby B became the king, he granted the Stormlands. Not to his brother Stannis, not to his brother Renly, <laughs> but to Lord Ronit Morrigan. Why? Oh, the war's over. Ha, 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 the war finished. I didn't even realise. Oh, he did a bunch of executions. Long live Bobby B, he's won, yeah, he was victorious. And he imprisoned all these people. Okay, so Aegon is currently in prison for his, his uprising. Who is Bobby B executed? Um, died under suspicion. He assassinated Nymeria Sand. Why would he do that? Sure, why not? He executed Oswick Brune and Mervyn Starpike. Once more, uh, Mervyn Peak, sorry. Once more, a Peak has been beheaded for supporting a failed Blackfire Rebellion. They just can't... They just can't win. Is it, isn't it ridiculous how you have these massive wars and then the winner executes, like, two inconsequential nobles and it's like, yeah, done. And it's like, what? What about all the others? Okay. Where was I? Yeah, I was exploring uh, these... Thingies, I? So, so this lad. No, oh, what the fuck? Orton. Orton. What happened? Whoa. Okay. We gotta break things down. Tywin died of gout. Cersei still the queen. Jamie. Pun punish Jamie. How did that happen? That's cool. I wish he'd chosen a gem though. Um. Are these still... Why is he still married to Cersei and she's continuing to have <laughs> bastards with Jaime? Why? Yeah, Lucy, Lucian... So, Sunel, Lucian and Cynthia. I don't trust anyone called Lucian Sand. That's, a, that's the most comic book villain name ever. Uh, Tyrion. Died under suspicious circumstances. Oh, that's interesting, Cersei. Did he really? God damn it. But his son is Lord Orton. Cool. <laughs> Very interesting. Um, oh, Edmure's a zealot. Okay, Edmure carved the Star of the Seven into his head. That's interesting. Now you could cut yourself in those cheekbones. Greyjoy. How are the Greyjoys doing? Balon, after, <laughs> Balon lived like a king for a few years. Now he's just been chilling, doing his own thing. Asha is married to this Stafford Lannister. Why is she married to Stafford Lannister? This old ass man. Come on, Asha, you can do better. Damn. Theon has a son called Tom, which feels kind of weird. Who's your wife then? Sigland Harlor. 
Aragon bled out after a lengthy torture. What the hell? A lengthy torture? But Euron's dead. Who did that to you? That doesn't add up. Um, yeah, so... The Veil... Vale. Uh, rest in peace, John Aaron is dead, unsurprisingly. Um, Lysa has remarried to Mawin Frey. Yes, she's married a Frey. Mawin Frey, doesn't he become a maester? I'm making that up. Oh, wait, no, Mawin Frey doesn't exist. That's a. No, he does exist. Oh, I don't know. She's pregnant. Oh, my goodness, who's this? Yo, Chungus, look at this man. So, so that's Robert Aaron, who, let's be honest, that is clearly Littlefinger's son. And then there's this absolute Chad. Shout out to Lord Lucas, gluttonous, sadistic. He's got a crush on the liver. Okay, um. Oh. Oh, there's a war going on in the Westerlands. This was going to be a short live stream, but now it's descending into chaos. Um, Lord Arik of Hornvale in the war for Lord Stafford's claim. Stafford. Asher's husband is waging a war to become Lord Paramount of the Westerlands. Asher could be Lady Paramount. Oh, you scheming, scheming woman. I love it. Um, who's in charge of the war, by the way? Finn Halamir. Okay, cool. Uh, Ned Stark died, rest in peace. Ate some poisonous plants by mistake. Uh, I'm not surprised, actually. Weirdly, that's not surprising. I can see him doing that. I can see him giving some kind of, like, somber speech, like, these plants are the only things that have kept this family alive for generations. We eat them in our soup. We cook them into our bread. We eat them at night for a better sleep. These plants... Are what made House Stark. And he eats it and fucking dies, and they're like, oh, brilliant, nice one. You're talking about the wrong plants, Eddard. Um, but it means that we have Bobby S. in charge, which is called cool. Married to a Tua, yeah. Okay, let's find the names. Sonna Stark, Benarian Stark. Well, the Starks always have dumb names in the mod. Who has Sansa married? She kind of looks terrifying. Um, Harry and Locke. Scylla and Frella. Uh, Arya has married Brandon Kerwin or Sowen. Um, Bran has. <laughs> why does he look like a horse? Bran has married Alassane Flint and they have Malene. And Rickon and John Sella are just chilling. Benjamin's got a whole dynasty going down there. Okay. Okay, I'm going to check the chat again, and then I think we're going to do one more sweep of Westeros and maybe look at the minor characters as well, like the minor houses. And then we'll head off the live stream. Where did I get up to? Oh, the crab emojis, yeah. Sam is single-handedly consuming the entire rabbit population of Horn Hill. Oh, thank you for the super chat from Coleshot, who said, Someday every Frey Explained will drop, I'm sure. Every Frey Explained will drop, and it will be glorious. It will be a big, fun video. I'm not splitting into parts. It's going to be one big video. Every Frey Explained, I'm going to rush through all of them. Fast-paced, super good editing. Brr. But I need to spend like a month on that video, <laughs> which means I need to be in a position where I can upload one video in a month and not be in financial trouble. We're working towards it. It's a long-term project. Now, you might say, why not just work a little bit at a time? Um, I struggle with that. I can only really do one project at a time. My brain doesn't like me doing multiple things at once. I get, yeah, I just, I have to finish the one thing I'm on, you know. <laughs> Ned really said, bro, these edibles ain't shit and died. 
Yeah, <laughs> thanks for the super chat from Foxy Dean. Ned really said, these edibles ain't your shit. Two seconds later. He's more dead than... Ilan Payne. <laughs> than Ilan Payne slicing a sword through his neck. No, th those plants got him good. Every Frey Explained is the true dream of spring. Every Frey Explained is the winds of winter. Because it's taken a while, but it will come out when it's ready. Uh, House Royce Explained, however, is Dream of Spring. <laughs> my patron Months ago, my patrons voted on the next video being House Royce Explained. But I never made it because I realised no, not, not enough people would watch House Royce Explained. And I need to make more, like, viewer-friendly... Uh, more normy, more normy videos. So not the people watching these live streams, but the people who see it casually to build up the channel more. So I couldn't do House Royce this early. Yeah, all, uh, so there have been lots of fun deaths in this timeline. <laughs> the fact that Ned basically just like ate some fucking mushrooms and died. <laughs> I think I love the idea that he gave like a dramatic speech to his sons, being like, "Look at this mushroom. This has lived here for years and years, surviving the cold like us, the dire wolves of the north." He fucking dies. Okay, let's do one final epic sweep over Westeros before we wrap up the live stream, shall we? Um. House Brathian is looking strong. Uh, Robert, I'm not going to lie, he's a cuck. Robert is an absolute cuck. And Cersei is getting away with just constantly having bastards with Jamie, and everyone knows they're bastards, but Robert doesn't care. He's too depressed. Um, let's go through them then. So, Maya Stone is married to Donald Hill, who's a court jester. Um, Joffrey married Barrier Fell. Um... We could see a King Joffrey in the future. We have Marek, Alice, and Saria. Uh, Ned Storm has married Joy Hill. Oh, that's cute. That's, um, was it Jerrion's bastard daughter? Jerrion's bastard daughter? Yeah. That's kind of cute. Myrcella married Davin Lannister. Oh, they don't realise just how incesty that is. <laughs> they do not realise. That kid's going to be so fucked up. Um, Tom and Brathian married is that two wives Sanessa Ashford and then we have the non-book ones Josua who's clearly incest baby um, oh he just grew a beard in response uh, Elena who actually looks like Bobby B's only <laughs> only actual child with Cersei and then Robert has another bastard called Barra. Oh yeah, Barra. This is the um who who uh, prostitute at the end in of the crossroads, right? Barra. No, no, because she's sixteen. That doesn't make sense. This is no, that, that doesn't add up. Oh my god, look at Stannis. Oh look at Renly. Actually, we'll get to Renly. Stannis has had no kids. Okay. Cool. He's captain of the household guard. He wasn't even given Dragonstone. Fair enough. And then Renly has has had kids with Connington. Ronald and Terence. Um, good to know how the House of Baratheon stands. Now let's go to Dawn. He's looking more and more like a raisin. He's looking more and more like a squashed prune every time I check on him. But he's he's hanging in there. Duran the poet, he's still alive. The man is clearly suffering, but he's still alive. Uh, Quentin Martell, rest in peace, died under suspicious circumstances. We still don't know who did that. Ariane Martell, looking very good for 38, married to this absolute beta male. Uh, how's Oberyn doing? He's doing his thing. Cool. Let's check out the reach. Uh... Yes, House Hood. <laughs> the Hood timeline. House Hood of the Reach. This has been the most exciting Observer Mode stream I've done in a while. And this isn't even meant to be an Observer Mode stream. It's meant to be a Red Wine stream. 
Give it up to House Hood. So this is because... Oh, wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Yeah, this is because Alakine Florent died with only a daughter who married a Hood. And that... Uh, yeah, died of her injuries. And now we have Lord Manfred Hood. That's quite fun. Okay, so... Hello, who's this? Striking a sexy pose. House Hightower. Um, Leighton died of illness. Baylor Bright Smile. Slain in battle, rest in peace. And his daughter is now the Lady of the Hightower. That's fun. What about Chad Sam? <gasps> He's dead! Everyone. <laughs> Sam the Sleeper. So Chad Sam, the cruel, vicious, Targaryen-supporting Chad Sam, just became someone who slept a lot. Okay. Oh, and he became incapable at some point. He had a seizure. <laughs> Maybe he was wounded in battle. I can't believe Randall Tarly killed Euron and then died in a tourney. That's crazy. What was your name again? D D D Dickon. Shout out to Dickon Tarly. That's just unfortunate. Um, what else do we have? Oh yeah, the Tyrells. How are the Tyrells faring? After being kicked out of power and replaced by fucking House Hood. Um, yeah, Garland is going strong. Still childless, interestingly enough. Milk of the Poppy Addict. Dear Lord. Um, how has Loras got more children than Garland? Loras is the gay one. Garland, come on. Richard Tyrell. And then Marge has married... Has done honour. That's cool. Okay. The Stormlands? Oh, of course, House Morrigan. How can we forget about... How can we forget about House Morrigan? What other interesting houses? Oh, Tarth. Let's see how House Tarth got on. With, got on. Um, Brienne is... Brienne is being Brienne. She's chilling. She, she's Brienne. Dondarrion. Beric. Beric's going strong. Cool. Um, I'm just looking for cool houses. I'm, 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 all, the, all the minor characters. I want to see what happened to them. So, who is ruling Dragonstone right now? Wait, what? Why? Why does Balon own... <laughs> Why is Balon the Lord Paramount of Dragonstone? So, Robert overthrew King Balon. And he was like, hmm, maybe I can make Stannis the Lord of Dragonstone and then Renly can be Lord of... The Stormlands. Oh no no, Stannis can be Lord of the Stormlands and Renly can be Lord of Dragonstone. Let me think. No, I've got it. Balon, the king overthrew, he can be the Lord of Dragonstone. And some random Lord Morrigan can be Lord of Storm's End and my brothers can go fuck themselves. That's basically how it went down. I like how he's ma he's married to an Aaron. He's married to like a, a zealous Faith of the Seven Aaron. That's kind of funny. Ah, oh, no. But we'll check him out in a bit, actually. Oh, wait, why is the speed down there? I brought, brought, brought that down. He's also really cut up. Um. Wait, what the hell? Oh, he executed Monford Valarian. Oh, it must be for... I guess when the Targaryens invaded, he showed his loyalty. He was... He didn't side with the... Oh, rest in peace. <laughs> Shouldn't speak ill of the dead. Died from his wounds. Damn. But yeah, what I was saying was... He's in charge of this. He's in charge of the Valarians. And they sided with the Targaryens. They sided with the young Griff coming in. So he must have been like, I'm going to execute you myself. How dare you. Oh, that might be it. Maybe the smaller... The smaller supporters are being executed by their... Liege Lords. Maybe that's what happens. Who else sided with young Griff? I don't remember. Um... Okay, but Driftmark. Okay, so Monford 
the handsome Monford, who sides with Stannis in the books, has been executed for siding with young Griff. How is his brother Orain Waters doing? Orain Waters is, is, is safe. The bastard of Driftmark is doing fine. We can all relax. Um, okay, now let's move on to the Westerlands. Ah, we did it. Davin, Davin became Lord Paramount. <laughs> I see. So, okay, so Stafford did become Lord Paramount, it looks like. The stone-faced. And Asher could have become Lady Paramount of the Westerlands. But the one issue was that her husband's too old, so she wasn't able to enjoy it. So now we have Davin Lannister as the Lord Paramount. Oh, let me check the chat. Um... <laughs> Someone said, who knocked up my Ariane? Some prick in Dawn, go, go, go take it up with him. <laughs> Some of these comments. All right, so, uh, whoop, move yourself, okay. So Jamie, Jamie, punish Jamie still alive, Tyrion still dead, Orton's chilling. Cool. Who, who should we check in Castle Rock? Oh, obviously we have to check the, um, the Cleganes. Gregor's still alive. Doing his thing. And he hasn't killed anyone in this timeline, which is weird. Oh. Rest in peace, Sandor. Slain in battle by Tyget. Oh my god. Kevin's... Sorry. Tywin's brother. Tyrion's uncle. Killed the Hound in battle. There are, there are some weird deaths going on throughout this entire game. It's very strange. Okay, Riverlands. Let's move on to the Riverlands now. Yeah, for a second I was like, yo, who's he married to? Um, that's his region. We have Zealot Edmure. Ah, uh, oh, come on. What are you doing to me? There we go. Obviously, I'm interested in the crossing. Let's find out what House Frey have been up to. Um... Oh, every fray explained. Um, Walder died of old age. Stevron died of a broken heart. Why is that? Okay. Ryman drank himself to death. Edwin's in charge. Nice. Peter Pimple died of consumption. Aegon Frey died of old age. Rest in peace, Jingle Bell. Emmon Frey died of cancer. Amy's Frey died of a broken heart as well. Perianne was slain in battle. Don't know what she was doing in battle. Septon Luce Lucian of the Most Devout um, died from his wounds. Maester Melwis died of a fatal apoplexy. Hostine was slain in battle. That's quite fitting. Okay, I'm not going to go through all of them, but... Oh, wholesome Oliver Frey died gout ridden. Rest in peace. Okay. Uh, what else are we checking? we got to check the veil, of course. Robin Aaron... He's diligent, he's zealous, he's humble, he's greedy. He's doing all right, he's not doing terribly. He did burn someone at the stake, so that's quite concerning, actually. And he doesn't like cats. Their cat prefers, oh no, their cat prefers the company of others, okay. His mother is still alive, which implies that, to this day, 26-year-old Lord Robert is still Getting that titty milk from Ice Aaron, who has a pox. Uh, and we know Littlefinger's dead. Anyone else who's cool in the veil to check out? Uh, let's do the Iron Bull next. One last swoop. So we know Balon died of his wounds. And then Roderick. Roderick looks cool. You can't deny that. 
he's taken over the uh, the Euron role with the eye patch. Lord Marin. Asher, you married someone who could have become Lord Paramount. He was Lord Paramount, but it slipped through your fingers. You didn't. Oh, that's a shame. Theon drowned. Damn. That which is dead is can stay fucking dead, I guess. Rest in peace. And then his wife was murdered. Oh, Theon. Poor Theon. And then finally the North. Rob with the... Oh, look at the wolf pelt. Oh, Rob got the drip. Howland Reed is his region. That's fun. Who's he killed? He's slain some people in battle. Rob is looking cool. Is Catelyn still alive? Yeah, she is. Ooh, looking cool. Cadwell. Sansa. Sansa has three kids, uh, but her husband wants custody, and there's a big uh, public debate going on. Uh, Arya. There we go. Okay, I know some of these Stark names are... Uh, the <laughs> <laughs> the AI Stark names are a bit dumb, but Bin Hilda Stark, really? Bin Hilda Stark? Come on, Bran. Come on. Okay. Who can we check in the north as well? Um How are the reeds doing? Mi Barber? Where's, where's, oh, there we go, Mira. Jojen the Peaceful, Jojen is not paced. Good for him. Um, what else do we have? Oh, obviously we have to check out the Mandolis. Mandoli. Willis the Honest. And Big Bull Boy. Oh, that's Will. Oh, Wyman, Wyman died of pneumonia. He didn't even get fat enough. What about the Umbers? The Great John is still alive. Oh my god. The Great Great John's going str Yo <laughs> The Small John has glasses. The Small John has drip. Mmm. Honestly? Like the stubble? The five o'clock shadow and then like the moustache and the round hipster glasses and the long hair? He genuinely looks like a hipster. He looks like he owns a second-hand book, bookshop that sells, like, communist literature. He looks like he hands out flyers telling you to come to some event. Look at this man. <laughs> he looks like he hasn't showered in two months. Okay, now, obviously, what, what we're all waiting for is the Boltons. We know Roos got fucking murdered. Demeric has, is known as the Spear of the Dreadful. I like I, I I love that guy whose nickname was like the Lord of whatever their place was. He's like that's not a nickname. Very Adams family vibes with these two. Uh, Carl Carl Bolton, Albert Bolton, Balthazar Bolton. That's more like it. Shout out to the Pink Pavilion and Margaret Bolton. Okay. Ramsey's dead. Another one. Another one. DJ Khaled going crazy watching this live stream. So many character, so many villainous characters are just being murdered and burned to death. Okay, this is the base timeline. Yoron got killed by Randall Tarly, and then Randall Tarly got killed in a joust. Littlefinger got, execu got executed by his liege lord before he even joined the small council. Roos got killed in a fight. Ramsay got burned to death. I mean, what more can you ask for? Admittedly, this is not an evil Ramsay. This is a Ramsay who's a child at the start of the the start date and has just grown based on AI stuff. So, but even so, I think the time has come to wrap up the reign of King Robert the Bloody. Um, not that this live stream initially had anything to do with this. This was about the Arbor, so I hope you enjoyed my discussion of the Arbor. What? Wait, what? Why are the Tarleys in charge now? What the... 
I want to end this live stream, but more interesting stuff keeps happening. Sansara. Sansara Tali. Who even is that? That's Sam Tali's sister. Why? Why isn't... Why isn't Dick on the Lord Paramount? Why has his sister taken precedence? Cauliflower looking motherfucker. Seriously, what? <laughs> Why are you the Lady Paramount? Installed by faction demand. Okay, so House Hood has been overthrown by House Tar. So, in one live stream, we've had Tyrell, Florence, Hood, and Tarly all ruling over the Reach. And no, my voice did not just break. No, it didn't. You heard nothing. Okay. Oh my god, is she ever not pregnant? Okay, so we've ended Westeros is ruled by House Brathian, the House of Martell, Morrigan, Tali, Lannister, Tully, Aaron, and Stark rule over Westeros. And just for the simps in the audience, yes, I will look up and see how Melisandre is doing, if she's still alive. Oh, she's dead. Rest in peace. Is she not, not a court with you, bro? Um, okay. Let me just check the chat one more time. This was fun. Uh... Okay, so there we go. Thank you for <laughs> watching my Arbor live stream, which turned into a observer mode. Like and subscribe this video. Like the video to. Oh, why does the plane have to go overhead just as I'm doing my ending shtick? Oh, you know it anyway. Like, subscribe, watch my other videos, comment if you want, check out my Patreon if you want access to the Discord, or you want me to make art for you, or you want exclusive access to like the extended High Tower video or the House Dane video behind the scenes, all that stuff, teasers and stuff. Um, maybe merchandise will come out soon. Maybe this month or next month. Merchandise. Fancy Haven on a mug, on a t-shirt, on a pillow. A Fancy Haven body pillow to fulfill your heart's deepest desires. Um, I have no idea. But, yes, every Riverlands House Explained is coming out next Friday. And then in a couple of weeks after that, the animated history of the Blackfire Rebellions. It's going to be awesome. And in terms of live streams in the future, I want to do a Tyrell Theory Iceberg. I want to do some more Observer Mode streams. I want to do some stuff with Quinn the GM. That'd be nice. And the Assigning Real Life Crimes. Putting a Song of Ice Fire characters on trial for you to vote. Oh, Forest of Doom. I do a Choose Your Own Adventure Forest of Doom uh, live stream where you, the viewer gets, you guys get to vote on what I do next as I go through a Choose Your Own Adventure book from the 90s. Um, I haven't done Forest of Doom in a couple of weeks now. Um... Yeah, <laughs> there we go. Um, haven't done a live stream in a while, so thanks for coming along at, with literally zero notice. I appreciate it a lot. You guys are awesome. And we're nearly at 20k. Oh, and Boomler, if you're still watching, I'm go I'll do the art tomorrow, okay? I can't do it today. I didn't do any work today. Today I've been cleaning the house. Uh, or the flat, rather. In, in Guantanamo Bay, where I live. Um, but tomorrow I will do your character. Because you're Lord of Light. And you will be in that Blackfire video. I'll probably have you killed off by Melee's and Montress or some crazy shit. Okay, um, thank you for watching and good bye. Wait a minute. Yeah, no, goodbye. <laughs> Farewell. Okay, I pressed end stream and now my screen has frozen so that the stream is now awkwardly continuing. There we go. Goodbye for real.